change things. But if I had to guess, I don't think much is going to happen in the future to change this too much. Because it's been 25 years already, y'all. Again, y'all, the inaugural season was 1997. It's been 25 years already. If they had a way to make this a good product, and when I say a good product, I mean a profitable product, I think it would have happened already. It's not like they don't have experts in all the different things they need to do to make this thing work. Because you have a very successful NBA. Is this is a little bit different than than uh, well, it's it's like if you had a successful restaurant and you open up another restaurant, but the second restaurant just don't work. Now maybe the second restaurant is a little bit different. Now let's say you had a you open up a burger spot, right? You got a burger restaurant. Your burger restaurant is working out fine. Okay, so now you want to put a a little different. Maybe you want to put a little. Somehow a little bit different. Maybe you uh, open a seafood restaurant. Okay. And the burger restaurant clocking dollars. You good over there. Okay. <laughs> You're making a quarter million year at the burger restaurant. You open up the seafood restaurant. It's not like you don't know how to run a restaurant. You know how to do that. You know how to advertise your restaurant. You know how to bring customers in. But maybe you just in the area where people just don't like seafood like that. The, the seafood restaurant struggles. The seafood restaurant doesn't make a profit. Time goes on. Decades go by. Because that's what has happened to the WNBA. Literally decades have went by. Because you've had two decades at this point. And you still don't make profits. Now, I do believe most people would have dropped that... Uh, that uh, you drop the seafood business. You close that down. Because you're losing money on it. How long would you lose money on something that ain't working? Now, you know, Dr. Thunder says that, you know, lack of positive societal impact. Okay. Now, now, is there positive societal impact when it comes to the WNBA? I mean, when it first started, I thought it would be. I'm going to keep it real, y'all. When the when WNBA st first started, I thought it would be. Because what did I think about? I thought, you know, you know, I'm a regular person. I'm thinking, hey, you know, that'll give uh, some women some opportunity to play professional ball after they leave college. So automatically, I was like, okay, that, that's, that's going to be good for them. You know, you leave college. You couldn't go to the NBA after your your uh a basketball uh, career was over with, you know, your academic basketball career, you couldn't go to the NBA. Now, some women were lucky enough to go to the uh, to the Olympics, you know what I'm saying, depend upon when you graduate, because the Olympics is every four years. You know, you may get something out to deal there. You could become a star and things like that. Stuff could happen positively for you, depending upon what the situation is. But for most people, you know, if you well, most women who play collegiate ball, there was I didn't know of anything really to look forward to, you know, for, for those women. So I was like, okay, well, the WNBA would be a great thing. So now at least the top the top college women can play and earn some money in the WNBA. They, you know, sounds good to me. So I thought it was a very positive thing. I really did think it was a very positive thing. Okay. Now I understand, you know, we have the, the issue with society and, uh, you know, we have feminism going on in this society. And I personally don't see any use for feminism at this particular point because men, men do not have rights that women do not have in America. Feminism is something that should be, if you believe it's a good thing, it should be something practiced in another country. It does not need to be practiced in America. Okay. Now, the, the thing is, is it a positive thing that something like the WNBA exists? Because, yeah, people will support it due to feminist reason. But when it when it comes down to it, it's a failure. The WNBA has been failing for 25 years. OK, it's been failing for 25 years. When something fails for 25 years, should it get support? 
Okay? And I think that's a very legitimate question. And if it's anything else, I think the answer is pretty much no. When something fails for 25 years, you cut it off. You, matter of fact, you don't even let it go 25 years. Because who wants to keep losing money for 25 years? Now, I understand the NBA is something that a lot of very rich people are involved in. A lot of very rich people are involved in the WNBA. So they can lose, they can afford to lose money like regular folk can't. But at some point in time, I gotta look at it and say, well, why y'all even choosing to lose the money? This can't be a good idea. Y'all are pushing something, okay? But whatever you're pushing, to me, automatically is a bad thing because I don't even think it's good for the, you know what I'm saying, people who earn extreme levels of income. I don't even think they'd be a good example for people. You know what I'm saying? You could, you can learn a lot of, a lot of things about money from people who are rich. You can learn a lot of things, okay? But when rich people put 25 years into something that don't work, that sounds stupid. And the amazing part for me, because, hey, I'm not in their class. So from the outside looking in, I'm like, why are these people doing this stupid thing? I know they know enough about money. Heck, they probably know far more than me about money. <laughs> And if they don't know, uh, you know, in particular about money, they have enough money to pay all the advisors they need to pay to know and understand what they need to know because they make incredible amounts of money. So how could these people be this successful from a financial standpoint and be dumb enough to lose money on something for 25 years straight? That just don't make sense to me from the outside looking in. So even as a person who would look up to, you know, and I'm talking about from a financial perspective, you look up to somebody who's making more money than you, you try to learn things from them. Well, what were they doing? Because they, you know, their life seems to be pretty good. Let me try to copy some of the stuff that they're doing. And then I look at them funding the WNBA that does not work. That don't seem logical at all to me. But let me go ahead and get the mic to Tampa. How you doing, brother? You got it? Yo, Roger, man, I appreciate the opportunity, you know, to be on the panel. I guess I got I'm the first one here, so I got to set this thing off right. So um, <laughs> shout out to, you know, everybody else who come up after me, the replay game. Everybody who listening right now, just go ahead and do something that's not going to cost you anything. Hit that like button. If you're going ahead and like this content, go ahead and share it. You know what I mean? Long live the habitual line steppers. So we see Roger. <laughs> See, this is how I got to break it down. This is how I, I come to this. I'm just a simple man. Since people are comparing WNBA to the NBA, I just ask a few questions. How long has the WNBA been in existence? 25 years. All right, good. When did the NBA start? 1946. Excellent. So that means 1946 plus 25, that gives me 1971. Can you please tell me what the revenue for the NBA was in 1971? Oh, that was about thirty-two million. Okay, that's thirty-two million in nineteen seventy-one. What's that in today's dollars? Oh, yes, yeah, about uh, two hundred and forty-four million in revenue. Okay, that sounds good. Now, tell me this: What was the average NBA salary back in nineteen seventies, like through the seventies? Oh, it was about thirty-five thousand. It went up, you know, saying to like a hundred thousand at the end of the decade. Okay. So tell me this, 25 years, 1971, uh, 35,000, what's 35,000 US dollars now? Oh, that's equivalent to like a couple, a couple, like almost a, you know, a couple million. You know, you can do the calculations, you can figure that out. It's called the time value adjustment of money. And if you look at what, um, what 35,000 was equal to, in terms of what's the value of money now, it's almost the same as what the WNBA players are making. My freaking God. And you can look up, you can do these numbers, you can look at everything up that I just said, bro. And so I'm just sitting here wondering, oh yeah, and also, by the way, you know Amazon took 14 years before it started making a profit? 
14 years. So what, why, why I'm bringing all this, these, these pesty things called facts to the table. One, folks want y'all to be up in arguments about BS instead of just looking at the facts and seeing the reality, comparing apples to apples and oranges to oranges. Now, what they're trying to do is get into your feelings and emotions and saying that just because we are attached, we are under the same umbrella as the NBA, we should be getting paid just as much as the percentage of their revenue. You know why NBA gets 50% of all the revenue and not just incremental revenue? But that's because they make a profit, people. That's why. See, when you go out there and make a profit, you know, you cover your basis, then you can get a bigger percentage of the revenue. Now, what's about this argument that, you know, they can go to Russia and get paid more? You know what? I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, um, you can buy luxury bags in Italy for a lot cheaper than you can buy in the United States and a whole hell of a lot cheaper than you can buy it in China. A luxury item, people that don't got it get to pay. These people up in mother sucking Russia. They, what they got? Hockey? <laughs> you know, so it's a luxury to see an NBA player. So they pay a premium to go see you. So you can get a bigger piece of that revenue. Why? Because you bring it in the dollars. Now, instead of sitting back here whining and complaining about the NBA as an organization not giving y'all a bigger percentage of revenue, complaining about the salaries comparing well the best player Brittany Griner only made two hundred thousand by Steph Curry made forty four million. Guess what? TK Thomas only fans play page that doesn't exist made zero dollars and zero cents. But I'm sure there's some girl out there who's probably ranking in about ten thousand a day. So does that mean she gonna have to go ahead and be you know because it's equal, you know, she should go ahead and support me? Should I get a piece of her? Salary, she's all fun and games with equal pay when you supposedly are on the bottom. But when you're making more, ain't no more equal pay. It's all capitalism. It's all communism. When we, when I'm poor and desperate, and I ain't making it. I ain't got it. But when you get on top, you know what? You ain't, you ain't preaching that communism. Did anyone did, name the male? Name the male MNA fighter from the USC and other organizations was complaining when Ronda Rousey was out there making the most money out of any, 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 any fight out there. What guy said that Ronda, because we're in the same sport, I'm only making this and you making that. Can, you should give your money to me. What kind of asinine stuff is going on around here? You know, so I sit back and I think about it and then, and I'm just like, these people want me to argue for no reason. They just want me upset. They they figure that we have no historical memory, that we can't look this stuff up, that we stupid. What type of game are y'all ladies are playing? Get y'all, get, you know, build your business. Build your business. If I'm saying like hamburgers, I can't be mad at McDonald's bringing in billions. I can't go up to the, the shareholders of McDonald's and say, you know what, y'all just go ahead and bring me up because, you know, my, my restaurant making hamburgers, we in the same hamburger business, you know what I'm saying? But I ain't making as much as you. You know, it's not fair. I'm a CEO. You a CEO. I, I only get 5000 a year. You get $50 million, so you Let's equal it out. You, you know, you don't you don't need all that. You just give it to me. That's exactly how the argument for the WNBA is sounding. Now, question on the board is should the NBA exist? WNBA exist? And I say yes. With all types of profit nonprofit organizations, the NBA as an organization, if they want to give back to the community and their way of giving back to the community is having the WNBA. That's on them. Congratulations. Um, what's what's the guy's name? It's not David Stern. Forget the the commissioner now. But anyway, whoever the commissioner is, Adam Silver. <laughs> Man, you go yeah. ahead and do what you gotta do, Adam. That's your money. That's your organization's money. If y'all wanna have 
uh, you know, a, a nonprofit organization to promote basketball and have women out there running around, go ahead and do it. Have fun. Appreciate it. They should exist because that's on the NBA. But if you can't tell me that they deserve the same amount of money as the fellas, what they bringing in? Now, that's when you lost me with that. So I'm just going to go ahead and land my plane there. I'm going to drop off and listen to the background. I got some work to do tonight, man. I appreciate this quick opportunity to step up. But, hey, man, if you have any questions about those numbers that I, I stated, I, I, y'all, y'all can Google it. You just Google it. You can you can see everything that I'm saying. And you actually be surprised at how much $35,000 back in 1971 would be equal to today. You would be surprised. That's like like two hundred thousand in today's dollars. So that's about the same average salary what the WNBA is getting right now. But the difference is, back in those days, the NBA was profitable and didn't have somebody subsidizing them. This is not on men. This is not on the NBA. It, you women. Bill Burr said it right. Y'all don't watch women coming together to fight for a common goal. Y'all rather watch the Kardashians because that's what you put your time. That's what you pay your attention to. So those women, the Kardashians, get paid. But the basketball players don't get paid because y'all don't pay y'all attention to them. It's just plain and simple. And please, I'm an NBA fan. Don't ask me to do that. Do not ask me to pay attention to the WNBA because if that's the case, you know, I'm going to need some of y'all ladies to start watching some wrestling because, you know, wrestling is drama to me. You know, it's fake violence. You know, it's all good, but it's still lots of drama, lots of intriguing storylines. So if y'all women, y'all want me to watch the WNBA, y'all going to come here and watch me watch this um, Seth Rollins versus Roman Reigns match on this WWE pay-per-view. If you ain't going to do that, stop it. Keep that same energy. Just sit down and shut up because your arguments is bullshit and that. I I'm going to land the plane on that. Appreciate you, Roger. <laughs> Man, I definitely appreciate you. You, <laughs> but that was a heck of an open statement. You brought a lot to the table with that. One. You brought a whole lot to the table. Um, <laughs> now I gotta say, y'all, if they gave Brittany Griner the half of what the WNBA earned, her salary would be zero. Okay? Because <laughs> they've yet to make a profit. And it's been 25 years now, y'all. We te Technically, this is the 26th year. You know, they said the inaugural season, when I looked it up, the inaugural season was 1997. So they've went such a long time. They haven't made money. So e when it comes to an argument, should the, the, the players make more money that are in the WNBA. Um, from a business perspective, they already make too much. That's all I'm going to say. You know, <laughs> you know, if you look at it from a business perspective, they do make too much now. And I'll say they make too much now because it's been 25 years. I could understand them making the money they make now, you know, or when they were, when they were whatever they were getting paid in, in the first four, five, six, seven years, yeah, we got to pay people to come play. I get all that. But after 25 years and you ain't made a profit, I don't think I'm going to be talking very much about people <laughs> up and salary. Yeah, I'm not going to really give you a salary hike conversation. I'm not going to even take that seriously. Not not when we're decades in. But let me go and give it to the the uh, the guru, Black Uru. You got it, my brother. How you doing? Hey, Roger. Uh, how are you? I, I hope you're doing well. I, I hope um, Tampa is doing well and, and the folks in the chat. Um, you know, I, I have a lot of uh, views about uh, about oh, you know, uh, before, before you go, let me before you go, I do apologize. I did not read the super chat. Mr. Me Too just said something to me about it. My bad brother, my bad brother and thank you very much for the uh, super chat. Appreciate you, appreciate you. Uh, Mr. Me Too says in my opinion, the WNBA is a front to funnel resources from NBA slash black men or is some kind of gift from, from a one percenter to his wife or mistress. Wow. Bro, I didn't even think about it. that's That's a heck of a way to think about it. A way to funnel. I, I would say it has money. evolved into that. Uh or something similar to that. But I would not argue 
that was its original intent. And I, I blame the NBA continuing to see. I'm a, let me let me preface my commentary by saying I'm I'm a big fan of female sports. You know, I had daughters. They were involved in volleyball and cheerleading, softball. Uh, my elder daughter, gymnastics, ballet. I, I'm a I'm a huge fan of of female athletics. My uh, one of my neighbor's daughters plays at a high competitive level uh, volleyball uh, in the Pac-10. Uh, uh, you know, so okay. I, I'm very much supportive of, of female sports. Uh, so I don't I don't have a negative view about the existence of the W. Moreover, I blame the NBA uh, continuing to fund the WNBA and, and this sort of uh, uh, patronizing of the league. I, I think that's the source of the problem. I think, I think when they created the WNBA, they should have, okay, you got what you mentioned like five years for a business to turn profit. I mean, okay. I, mm-hmm. I don't know very many people who could who could stay in business five years and never turn a profit, but okay. Uh, well, so I, mean, I think at the W, I'm, I'm just saying that breaks down the average. Well, that, that's one. Of, that's one of those things that people throw out. Yeah, that that's one of those things that people throw out. I I, I question how how many of them have ever actually had a business. You know, that's right. that's a weird kind of average. You know, that takes in consideration. Maybe some business that was funded by a trust fund baby, and so they can be in business for like 15 years and never heard a profit. And then the majority of other people, you know, they're fucking out of business after two years. So you, you exactly. got to be careful about what that average means, <laughs> you know. But uh, I blame the WNBA because I I think because the WA has in well mostly into like perpetuity continue to fund the the profit shortages of the league, it has uh, dissuaded the league from making uh, better decisions about what would make the league more profitable. Like, I, I, I have one idea that I would argue would make the WNBA profitable within two or three years, three years tops. One thing at all, one one thing. What I would do is I would target every, from a marketing standpoint, I would target every father of minor children, daughters and sons. I would target every father of minor children in the country in my marketing program. My biggest marketing day would be Father's Day. Anything related to fathers of, of young children in particular, I would market the lead to them. Why would I do that? If you get the hearts of, father, of fathers of young children, they will take their children to games. They will buy the merchandise. They will encourage other people to come to games. And how do I know this? Again, because I've been a father of daughters who participated in sports. I've doled out thousands of dollars to volleyball, softball, cheerleading, and all of that. Never thought twice about it. Never had took any umbrage about it at all. I had no soccer. When I had I had a Korean exchange student. She was with me two years. She 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 loved soccer. She played soccer. I was all in the soccer thing, all at the soccer events, all in the soccer championships, all this all over the south suburbs with the little Korean girl at all these these events. <laughs> A lot of black people, white people, little <laughs> Korean girl running around. If you got the hearts, if you won over the hearts of fathers of young children, they would take their children to those games. They would buy that merchandise. They would do it for their children. And and if you express love for the fathers, they will reciprocate. We have a whole damn country that don't give a shit about fathers. 
and every way try to demean father. And let's be real, the biggest supporters and consumers of all forms of sports are men, most of whom at some point become parents or become you know, fathers. You know, so one of the biggest problems with the WNBA, all this alternative stuff, all this 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 feminist stuff, that's the that's the big problem with the WNBA. It's not look, when you watch when you watch a sport featuring females, you don't expect them to be men. I can watch a, a, a tennis match with uh, I you know, I, I'm a huge tennis fan. Uh, I've been a tennis fan since like the early 70s. Dude, I I watch Chris Everett of uh, tennis matches like I watch uh, uh, Jimmy Connors tennis matches. I watch Yvonne Gulagon's tennis matches just like I watch, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, John McEnroe tennis matches. Be on board, you know. Uh, uh, what's her name? Zena Williams, or oh, uh, uh, what was her name? I'm sorry, the, the black woman who came up before uh, uh, Serena and Venus. Damn, what was her name? Uh, and and I enjoy those sports. Maybe not quite as much as I enjoyed the men, but I definitely enjoyed those sports. They were com- competitive sports in their own right. I enjoy. Female gymnastics. Actually, I enjoy female gymnastics for some reasons, both, you know, somewhat lurid, maybe. But I enjoy female gymnastics much more so than I do male gymnastics. You know, I enjoy a female uh, figure skating more than I do male figure skating. So there, there is an opportunity to sell and market female sports if you acknowledge that women are different and and build and market the sport accordingly. And like I say, I think one of the best things that WNBA could do would be to market to fathers. Okay. Now, I got to say, the fact that they have an NBA, because they do have a more unusual situation because you already have uh, a male product that's extremely successful. (laughs) <laughs> and it's been extremely successful over the last 25 years. You know, while the WNBA has come into existence, which didn't happen to 1997, uh, you know, basketball was was definitely at a height at that particular time. You know, in 97, you got Michael Jordan winning championship number five. People all over the country is watching the NBA. They know how to market the game. That's what I have to assume. If you can successfully market men's basketball, there's no reason t- for me to believe that you don't know how to successfully market women's basketball. Because I don't think that makes sense. If you can do it for one gender, you could do it for the other gender. And and the fact that you have people who are paid big money to figure all this stuff out. See, my thing is, and and it's not. But, but, but you got to you, you you talk about marketing. You're talking about marketing, but you're not. That's not the whole story of what's going on here, you know. Because what's really not, going on here is, is is politics, you know. I, I I am certain Adam Silver and their crew knows how how to better market the sport, but I think they're hamstrung by uh, political issues. What was he? That's what I was going to say, Black. I don't think. I can't credit them for not being able to figure out what you figured out because you're not you, you don't you don't you you got your own life. You're thinking about other things. And if you can figure it out, then these people that are paid can, you know, what I'm saying like this is what they actually do for a living. Then they can figure this stuff out, too. So to me, it was that's a slight on them, not a slight on you, a slight on them. How come you can figure it out and they can't, you know, so. um that's why I, I got to say, to me, there, there's a question. Should this thing even exist at this particular point? Because if if you are, especially a bunch of rich people showing Americans how to fail, should you really even exist? You know, to me, that's questionable. But shout out to No Placeholder. <laughs> Thank you very much for the super sticker, my brother. Uh, appreciate you. 
and he's then come to join the party. So I'm gonna go ahead and give the mic to him, and then we'll give it to AL who's following up. So no place holder, you got it, brother. How you doing? I'm doing well, Roger. Good morning to you. Good morning to AL. Good morning to the chat. Good now, morning, I actually, sir. Good morning, sir. I actually just I uh, jot down a few quick um points. So I have three points. Uh, one, the WNBA exists to continue competition between.